The book of Revelation is undoubtedly the most mysterious and intriguing in the entire Bible. Besides being filled with symbolism, this book speaks of things that are yet to happen in the future, using figurative language capable of sparking curiosity and prompting reflection on our spiritual lives. In Revelation, we encounter a series of prophecies and visions delivered by God to the Apostle John while he was imprisoned on the island of Patmos. John described various events, including the seven trumpets played by seven angels, each triggering a series of judgments upon the earth. Additionally, seven angels are mentioned who pour out seven bowls, each bringing different plagues from the Lord upon those who rejected his salvation. But what few people know is that, among these apocalyptic visions, the Apostle John mentions four women. They are not characters to be ignored. They play crucial roles in the fulfillment of prophecies about the return of Jesus and the end times. It is about these four mysterious figures that I want to talk to you today. After all, who are they? What do they represent? And more importantly, with which one do you identify the most? Keep in mind that your answer may determine which side you will be on when the prophecies are fulfilled and Jesus returns. But before we delve into that, I ask that you subscribe to my channel. Just click on this button to subscribe right below the video. A bell icon will appear on the side. Click on it as well and select the All option so that you receive my upcoming videos directly on your phone. And the first woman I want to talk to you about is Jezebel. Chapter 2 of the book of Revelation mentions this woman in a letter to the church of Thyatira. Take a look at what the Bible says. To the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These are the words of the Son of God, whose eyes are like blazing fire, and whose feet are like burnished bronze. I know your deeds, your love and faith, your service and perseverance, and that you are now doing more than you did at first. Nevertheless, I have this against you, you tolerate that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophet. By her teaching she misleads my servants into sexual immorality and the eating of food sacrificed to idols. Look at this. Jezebel is a woman who first appears in the Old Testament. She was the wife of an Israelite king named Ahab and was known for her worship of pagan gods, especially Baal, and for persecuting the prophets of the Lord. Jezebel was a very cruel and manipulative queen who used her influence over the king to promote idolatry and oppose the worship of the Lord. Her story is told in the books of 1st and 2nd Kings, and the end of her life was quite tragic. She was thrown out of a palace window, and her body was consumed by dogs, as prophesied in the Bible. In the book of Revelation, Jezebel represents religious hypocrisy and sexual impurity. This woman symbolizes those who claim to serve God but are entangled in some form of sin related to the flesh. Many people profess to be Christians but are deeply addicted to pornography, betray their spouses, or even lead promiscuous lives, engaging in sexual relationships with various people, and in many cases, even with the same sex. If you claim to be a child of God but act contrary to that claim, engaging in sexual relations with multiple people, betraying your spouse, or using sex to manipulate others, Know that you are under the influence of Jezebel and need to change your ways as soon as possible to avoid the consequences of sin. Continuing in the chapter, God issues a warning to those who do not repent of their sins and continue to be under Jezebel's influence. He says the following, I have given her time to repent of her immorality, but she is unwilling. So I will cast her on a bed of suffering and I will make those who commit adultery with her suffer intensely unless they repent of her ways. I will strike her children dead. Then all the churches will know that I am he who searches hearts and minds, and I will repay each of you according to your deeds. The second woman, the woman clothed with the sun. In chapter 12 of Revelation, the apostle John provides details about this woman. Let's see what the Bible says. A great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet and a crown of twelve stars on her head. She was pregnant and cried out in pain as she was about to give birth. For us to understand who this second woman would be, we need to go back once again to the Old Testament, specifically to Genesis 37, 9, 11. In these verses, a young man named Joseph told his parents and his eleven brothers about a dream he had 
where the sun, the moon, and eleven stars bowed down to him. Jacob, the father of that young man, questioned his son, saying, So you mean to tell me that I, your mother, and your brothers will bow down to you? As you may know, Jacob had his name changed by the Lord, and he came to be called Israel, and each of his sons represented one of the twelve tribes of God's people. But the question remains, who would this woman clothed with the sun be? Why does the Bible mention her pregnancy and that she is about to give birth to a son? Let's now read the sequence in Revelation chapter 12. Then another sign appeared in heaven, an enormous red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns on its heads. Its tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to the earth. The dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth so that it might devour her child the moment he was born. She gave birth to a son, a male child, who will rule all the nations with an iron scepter. And her child was snatched up to God and to his throne. The woman fled into the wilderness to a place prepared for her by God, where she might be taken care of for 1,260 days. Based on all this information, we can say that the woman clothed with the sun is, in fact, the nation of Israel. The prophecy indicates that she was about to give birth to a male child who would rule all nations with a rod of iron. This text also states that this child was caught up to God and his throne, which can only represent Jesus, who came into the world in human form in Bethlehem, an Israelite city. Additionally, Jesus' parents were direct descendants of Abraham. Do you see how everything makes sense? You might be wondering now, but pastor, I am not Israeli, so how can I have any connection with this woman? I don't know if you're aware, but the Jewish people are very religious, praying often, fasting regularly, attending synagogues, and being closely connected to their fellow believers. However, there's a catch. Jews still reject Jesus as their savior and do not believe that he is the Messiah sent by God to deliver their people from sin. Similarly, you might be a religious person, striving for a spiritual life with God and doing what is right, but you may be missing the crucial aspect. You don't believe in Jesus or what the Bible says about him. If you're someone who thinks that all paths lead to God, that the important thing is to be happy, and that not doing harm to anyone is crucial, you are mistaken. Jesus himself said that whoever does not believe in him as their savior will be condemned eternally because he is the only way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through him. Therefore, place your faith in Christ today because only he can ensure your salvation and eternal life. He alone paid the price for your guilt and sin. The third woman, the great harlot, this is the woman that generates the most confusion among Bible scholars. The great harlot, also referred to as the great whore in some versions, is mentioned in chapters 17 and 18 of the book of Revelation. Let's see what the Apostle John wrote about her. The woman was dressed in purple and scarlet and was glittering with gold, precious stones and pearls. She held a golden cup in her hand, filled with abominable things and the filth of her adulteries. The name written on her forehead was a mystery. Babylon, the great the mother of prostitutes and of the abominations of the earth. I saw that the woman was drunk with the blood of God's holy people, the blood of those who bore testimony to Jesus. When I saw her, I was greatly astonished. Look at this, brothers and sisters. Despite the debate over who this woman might be, the vast majority of theologians believe that this great harlot represents some form of false global religious system that will be present on earth during the seven-year period of tribulation. There will be a time when the entire world will be deceived by the Antichrist and the false prophet, and many will be part of a type of religion that preaches false peace and unity among peoples. As you saw in the passage we just read in Revelation 17, this woman is referred to as Babylon. If we go back to the Old Testament, we'll find a passage that talks about a city called Babel, whose inhabitants decided to build a tower to reach the heavens. After God poured out his wrath on those people, confusing their languages so they could no longer communicate, Babel became Babylon, and it was there that evil began to multiply, including the rise of various false religions and the worship of false gods. It's no coincidence that the Apostle John calls her the mother of prostitutes and of the abominations of the earth. 
And this woman, in the end times, will be greatly responsible for encouraging the inhabitants of the earth to commit all kinds of sins against God, especially sexual immorality and spiritual idolatry, as if all of this were a true expression of faith. Another characteristic of this false world religion is that it will be in great conflict with Christians and Christianity. Notice that the Bible says she was drunk with the blood of the saints and the witnesses of Jesus. In other words, all those who serve Christ during the tribulation will be persecuted and likely killed by her. But those who think that the great harlot will only begin to act in the world after the rise of the Antichrist are mistaken. In reality, her spirit already dwells on earth and she has been acting right before our eyes, causing religious groups that present themselves as representatives of Christ to accept and even encourage the sins of idolatry and immorality among their members. Recently, for example, Pope Francis approved the blessing of same-sex marriages by Catholic priests. I know this may seem beautiful, modern, and inclusive, but it goes completely against the Word of God. In fact, the word inclusion will be one of the great slogans of the great harlot. In the continuation of chapter 17, the Apostle John says he saw this woman sitting on the waters, and these waters represented peoples, multitudes, nations, and languages. In other words, practically everyone was part of her. And to help you understand how you might identify with this woman, let's go back to talking about those who say that all paths lead to God. Brothers and sisters nowadays, it is the spirit of the great harlot that operates in the minds of these people, deceiving them. This spirit utilizes a movement called Progressive Christianity, which preaches that you can indeed serve and love Jesus while accepting teachings that go against his word. I ask you, are you part of any religious group that preaches this false teaching? Also, do you never take a stance, never touch on this subject for fear of offending people? If so, know that you are under the influence of this woman. See what Revelation 18 has to say about what will happen to this woman. Then a mighty angel picked up a boulder the size of a large millstone and threw it into the sea and said, With such violence the great city of Babylon will be thrown down, never to be found again. I don't wish this to happen to you, so I have good news to share. There is a fourth woman, and if you mirror yourself in her, you will receive the best of rewards. And it is about her that we will talk from now on. The Fourth Woman, The Bride of Christ if the first three women in the book of Revelation symbolize sin, deceit, and rejection of Jesus as Savior, the fourth is the opposite of them all. The Bride of Christ is the Church, purified by the blood of the Bridegroom and dressed in white robes to unite with Him for all eternity. Right after the destruction of the great harlot, the Apostle John narrates the following vision. Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of rushing waters and like loud peals of thunder, shouting, Hallelujah, for our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give Him glory. For the wedding of the Lamb has come, and His bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Fine linen stands for the righteous acts of God's holy people. How beautiful, brothers and sisters! The image of the bride in Revelation is part of a larger vision that includes the celebration of the marriage supper of the Lamb, symbolizing the final union and eternal communion between Jesus and the Church after His return. The bride is described as adorned and ready for the wedding, symbolizing the purity and holiness of the Church. The encounter of the fourth woman with Christ symbolizes that good has triumphed over evil, and God has fulfilled His promise to save and redeem those who have been loyal to Him. This image of the bride ready for the bridegroom reminds us that the church must remain faithful and spiritually prepared for the second coming of Christ. Amen? My brothers and sisters, this will be the most exciting moment in history. The parting of the Red Sea, the manna falling from heaven, the chariot of fire that came to take Elijah, the multiplication of loaves and fish, None of these events will compare to the union between Christ and His Church. I sincerely hope that you long for this moment more than anything else in your life. And I pray, my brother and sister, to be present at this wedding and to look to the side and see you dressed in the purest white linen, ready to spend eternity with Jesus. Amen? If you enjoyed this message, 
Share it with your friends and family and subscribe to my channel. May God bless you mightily. A big hug.